Now in the last video I showed you how to find R and P by resolving perpendicular and up the plane. And it was quite long actually to find R and P. And I did say that there was a better method for this question. It's more of a one off actually. And I'm going to show you how you could do it slightly quicker. What I've done is though I've left the equation that we had when we resolved up the plane, I've left that in but taken out the first equation where we resolved perpendicular to the plane. What I'm going to do is to resolve in a vertical sense. I'll explain why in a moment. Okay, What I'm going to do is just put a dotted line up through here. And what we need to do is put an angle in here and we can see hopefully that this angle in here is alpha it's opposite this one here it's vertically opposite when we've got two lines that cross so this is angle alpha now the reason I want to resolve upwards is because if we resolve upwards P as a force acts perpendicular to this direction so it won't enter the equation. Last time when we did the resolving we ended up with an equation with R and P in it but in this particular way of resolving for this example because P is perpendicular to this direction it won't enter the equation so therefore I can avoid simultaneous equations as such and the solution be a lot quicker. So let's resolve upwards. If we resolve upwards then we've got part of the R acts upwards. Okay, okay, we've got to split R because it doesn't lie on this line into two components and we can think of one in that direction and one horizontally. We're not interested in the horizontal component because it's perpendicular to this direction. So it contains the angle so it's going to be cosine R cos alpha. So we can start by saying R cos alpha. That's, that's the component of R in the upward sense. Now we've got this one. This does not act in this direction so we can split this force into two components one upwards and one horizontal. We're only interested in the upward component and because it doesn't contain the angle alpha in this 90 degrees it's going to be mu r sine alpha and it'll be plus so we've got plus mu r but mu is 0 0.5 times r times the sine of alpha now as I said earlier p is perpendicular to this direction so we don't have to worry about p now we come round to this force and all of 1.1g acts downwards in this direction. So we can say that's minus 1.1g and this is now the resultant force and because it's in equilibrium that resultant force must be zero. Now if I fill it in with cos alpha and sine alpha as we did before we've got therefore r times cos alpha. Cos alpha was 4 fifths or 0 0.8 so we've got r times 0 0.8. We've got 0 0.5 times the sine of alpha here. Sine of alpha 3 fifths which is 0 0.6. So we've got plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.6 r. And then we've got minus 1.1 g. And we'll just put that in as minus 1.1 g and it equals zero. So you've got 0.8 r and 0.5 of 0.6 r that's 0.3 r so you have got 1.1 r okay on that side 1.1 r and if we add 1.1 g to both sides we're just going to get 1.1 g. Let's just do that 1.1 g. Now you'll notice if you divide by 1.1 to both sides you end up with r equaling g or g is 9.8 and that gets you r straight away and that's the order that they asked the question actually so 
I think you'll find that that is a better method. And then obviously now that we've got R as 9.8 newtons, what I've done is gone back to the resolving equation that we had before, resolving up the plane. And what we can do is just put 9.8 in for R. And if we do that, let's just say sub R equals 9.8 into equation 2. And if we do that, we get 0 0.5 times 9.8 plus P cos alpha. Cos alpha, remember, was 4 fifths then, so that's 0 0.8 minus 1.1 G times sine of alpha. Sine of alpha, 3 fifths, 0 0.6 equals 0. Well, I'll leave you to rearrange this, but at the end of the day, what you'll find is that you get P to be 1.96. Okay? 1.96 newtons. So we've got our values of R and values of P. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this question.